for this type of tour, you have to wake up like at about 11 o'clock. You're on stage by 2.30, which yeah. is different. I mean, when you do a regular tour, you get up at about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and... You can comfortably eat and everything and just kind of hang out yeah. and then get, you know, practice for a while and do the show, stuff like that. This is like a real quick thing. Up at noon and then on stage two hours later, it's like... It's, it's a, like a weird Cats 22 because if you get too late to sleep and you don't get enough sleep, you feel like beep, you know, during the day and you play less. But if you get a lot of sleep, you know, get 10 hours of sleep, which has happened a couple of times, you wake up and you feel like really groggy for the first kind of first couple hours because you slept so much. So it's like it's a no matter what happens, you lose. On this tour, I've gotten more sun than I have in the last two years. I'm excited, extra excited about this thing, you know. Every show means so much. You know, it's like charge, this huge charge. It has to be that way. The kids are expecting that. The kids are expecting so much. And seeing us in two years, they're expecting us to just kill them. These concerts just gets the blood flowing in every single one of us. Woo! That's what it is. Yeah, right here. That's Woo! what it's all yeah. about. It's not about this music that just gets us all going. Happy yeah, metal! Right yeah. Just leave me alone. Kids are expecting so much because they're expecting us to just kill them. Metallica is the best. Eddie Van Halen. Right here. Metallica right here. Rock and roll, yeah! The Scorpions. We look at it like a big party thing. We don't feel like we play under one hand or above one hand. We feel like we play with one hand, we play with Metallica, we play with Dokken and Kingdom Come. It's like a package. It's the greatest concert in the world. Nine hours is great. Never see one like this again. Well, I figure it's the biggest thing since uh, Woodstock. <laughs> you got five bands who are of major stature, especially when they're standing up. If you think for one minute that each one of those bands isn't there to blow the other one off, the, you know, from here to you know where, then uh, you got it wrong. It's just more intense, man. It's easy to go out there and just go overboard because it's overboard looking out there, man. <laughs> I'm scared to death. I flew in in a helicopter over the audience. I get the chills just telling you about it. I looked at that audience and now I'm, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm shook up. I gotta go to the bathroom. I thought, oh man, you know, no big deal. I can handle it. 40,000 people, no problem. I get up to the top of the stairs and I look out there and uh, you know, my knees got weak. I was I was scared. It's great. You're walking up that ramp and they all stand up and start screaming and you give them the sign back, you know? And uh, that starts getting you going and then they shut off the music with the that they're playing, which is usually a Jimi Hendrix tape that we play before we go on. And uh, they shut that off, and then the roar is so loud, man, your heart just starts pumping out adrenaline. Somebody asked me, is it lonely at the top, right? And I was just thinking, man, it's great to be with these guys. 
You know, I mean, it's like if I hated him and we had to spend all this time on a bus and playing together and stuff, it would, it would be a drag, you know. But it's like we have a great time together. <laughs> It was the first time in my life where I like, well, wow, this is like a band. Even though I co-produced it and wrote most of the songs, this is still a big family scene. So I had a very particular view what kinds of musicians I want to be playing with. Especially after that, I like to call it well-paid education with Stone Fury. I learned a lot, I got humbled a lot, it was not easy, lots of headaches. But it's good, I mean, you gotta go through that stuff to be able to sing the blues, right? I was a big fan of Stone Furies. When they said, yeah, they want to try out for the new Stone Fury, and I said, great, man. So I was real psyched, and uh, they asked me if uh, I knew any blues guitarists, and I got to bring my best friend Danny Stagg down. So when Danny came in, I asked him to improvise a solo for the blues, what love can be. And uh, once he played the solo for the blues, I knew that he is my man. Danny is a very, he's a strong personality in his own way. He lives in his own bubble. He's a philosopher. He doesn't own one Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin album. We're talking Flower Power Hendrix. That's his background. We didn't set out to copy anyone. You know, we set out to not sound like a lot of people and to do what we wanted to do. And we ended up sounding the way we do. We are musicians, and we want to sell our music. We want to share our music. And um, so it's just a bunch of guys on stage performing the music. When we were done with the album, we were sitting on it. I, I was happy with it. But I just, I had my doubts, I really did. I wondered, man, you know, are people gonna really care about blues guitar playing and stuff, you know? But it turns out they do, you know, it's great. So the first video didn't turn out the way we were hoping it would. It's just a modest introduction of the band. This is how we look like, here we are. This is what our image, we think, looks like. That's why we add all those candles, those little castle scenes. great vibe with all the candles there and uh, our manager's daughter was in it did this little fairy tale scene and stuff and uh, it was just everything was so new at that point anyway and our song was number one requested and hey you got to get this video done this week you know and it was great you know and then uh, uh yeah, sometimes, sometimes when, you, when you try like very hard i mean every artist likes to do something which hasn't been done before mm. and it always sounds great but then by the time you finished it it is always something original because every human being is original. But then again, most of the stuff you did still has been seen somewhere, somehow before. Right? And now you know what we can do for you. Something has come to life between us two. The boys are pushing hard to playing out the bed. But 
the time we went to Europe uh, and doing our European tour, all of a sudden the second video was needed badly. So we like had to come up with something. So basically what we did is we said, screw this deep sense of a video. Let's just go for the lock. Let's just show ourselves, let's perform the blues, right? <laughs> We just want to be involved in our videos basically because uh, it's very hard to say what you want but we know exactly what we don't want. So at least to make sure you won't be put in an, into an image which you don't believe in is right for you, that's why we want to be involved. I never, never, never there are still lots of people out there speculating, is this band able to do with it, what they did on the album and blah blah and, and this old Zeppelin stuff. <sighs> you know, I mean, all this. So it's good for us to prove a point now. The only way of doing it is playing live. I was a string of knowing where I belong. Let me out of time. Let me out of time. We just always try and keep it an, uh, open mind, as open mind as possible and I think over the last couple of years we've been putting a lot of categories that I think are too limiting for what we try and do which we, we try and sort of do a lot of different things we like doing slower ballad type things we like doing the fast so it's like we have like a certain area where we feel comfortable operating in and I just hate when people try and limit us or limit you know what they allow us to do or whatever so you know that's the bait the whole attitude of Metallica <laughs> This type of tour, you have to wake up like at about 11 o'clock. You're on stage by 2:30, which yeah. is different. I mean, when you do a regular tour, you get up at about four or five o'clock in the afternoon and you can comfortably eat and everything, and just kind of hang out yeah. and then get you know practice for a while, and do the show stuff like that. This is like a real quick thing. Up at noon and on stage two hours later, it's like Whoa. it's it's a, like a weird catch 22 because if you get too late to sleep. And you don't get enough sleep, you feel like beep, you know, during the day and you play less. But if you get a lot of sleep, you know, get 10 hours of sleep, which has happened a couple of times, you wake up and you feel like really groggy for the first kind of, first couple of hours because you've slept so much. So it's like, it's a, no matter what happens, you lose. On this tour, I've gotten more sun than I have in the last two years. <laughs> I'm excited, extra excited about this thing, you know. Every show means so much. Yeah, it's like charge, this huge charge. It has to be that way. The kids are expecting that. The kids are expecting so much. And seeing us in two years, they're expecting us to just kill them. <laughs> Metallica is the best. Why? Because they play the hardest metal there is. Metallica rules. I like it because they're just a bunch of guys having fun. I mean, we don't view ourselves as being much different than the audience. I mean, we just happen to be the guys up on stage, and they just happen to be the people in the audience. And we, I mean, we're musicians, but I'm sure there's a lot of other musicians out there. Uh, and that's something that we've always, always took into account. That, I mean, we're basically fans, too. If we weren't there on the stage, we'd be there, be there checking out the bands. Yeah. Just put it like this, when you see Metallica uh, in the hotel on the day off, they're dressed exactly like when you see them on stage, you know? And I dig that. I say, you know, they don't go out there, same thing. They're not putting on a show. They're going out there and playing music and doing, just doing this thing. And in a way, they're, they're like my favorite band on the show, too, only because it does, it just, it reminds me 
to kind of stay in touch with the street and with what really where you really at and not, and not get too showbiz, you know. <laughs> It might sound a bit arrogant, but Metallica is like a very inward looking band. You know the kind of performance that come up and go, well, we're doing this for the kids and we're playing for the people out there and, you know, rock and roll for the people. It's like, we're like exactly the opposite. We like look more inwards and are more worried about keeping ourselves satisfied and really doing what feels right to us. The last thing Metallica wants to be known as is a, is as a band that's, you know, preaching. I mean, we're not, you know, out to say, hey, we're a band with a message. I mean, the topics that that are involved with us are just things that that mean something to us personally. I mean, if you get the message, you know, that's cool, because that's how we think. If you don't get the message, then, you know, well. We try to instill a sense of realism into our music. We don't like sing about love and partying. Can you picture us playing the music that we do and singing lyrics like, come on baby, come to my pad. We'll have a good time. Metallica would never change to cater to anyone else's mind. We would always stay the same and have people cater, you know, change for us. And I think that looking back on the last couple of years, the most satisfying thing is that that's really what's happened, you know. I think part of what Metallica is that there's always the, the thing that we can always go in whatever direction we want because we always set the terms ourselves, you know what I mean? So I don't want to sit here and go, we'll never do this, we'll never do that because if it feels right to us, then we're going to do it and we're not going to worry about what other people think of it. Now, when I was 10 years old, I saw Woodstock and I said, that's what I want to do someday, so now I'm getting my chance. Yeah, we were real excited because uh, this is probably the largest thing that Dawkins ever done as far as performing to that many people and uh, just being, you know, being counted as part of the monsters of rock, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, thing for us to be involved in, so we were really happy that, that you know, Van Halen asked us to, to do it. And we paid him a lot of money, too, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm fans of all the bands. Why I'm so nervous? You got Klaus Mine, who I think is a great singer. You got Metallica, who are like one of the most killer bands around. Everybody already knows that. You got Kingdom Come, Lenny's a great singer too. And you got Van Halen, one of the best guitar players in the world. And Sammy Hager, the guy with the most energy I've ever seen because we toured with Sammy Hager before. And uh, he made me tired just watching him perform. So, yeah, I'm nervous. It's a lot of work, you know, and it's hot outside, and so I think everybody's gone way out of their way to uh, 
to make it, you know, Van Halen's gone out of their way to make everything as uh, easy for everybody as possible, you know. I mean, it's competition, it's very competitive, but at the same time, it's a lot of camaraderie, I think. It's just like a reward. It's, it's like a touring vacation, because there's, there's a lot of days off in between shows. It makes it really easy to tour, and you can just, you know, go to the next pool and the next uh, lounge and, and hang around. And uh, being able to go out and play in front of all of that many people in such short a time is probably the best thing for Doc. I'll give you your last chance. I listen to what's on the radios and the places that I'm at, you know, cause just to see what's going on. I'm just trying to stay up on what's what's happening around. I guess, you know, being aware of where we are and what's being played and stuff. I don't think we're really either trying to write songs for the radio. Uh, we're just trying to write a song that, you know, is, is valid to what we're about and stuff. And that ends up being something close to what can be played on the radio, so we're very lucky in that way. first started off in Dock and we had a problem getting a record deal because they said it's over for you guys. Your sound of music is dinosaur rock because My Sharon was popular and the knack was going to be the new thing of the 80s. Ha! Surprise! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! We had the last laugh, you know, because we're still here, still doing the same kind of music and, and the knack is uh, they're flipping burgers. <laughs> I think the new band's coming out, and I feel uh, also reflective with Doc on, on the new album. On the back of the attack album, it's like a kind of a uh, fight the trends, you know? It's like, this is what we are. If you love us, fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. This is what we do. Either take us for what we are or uh, go flip burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it can, if it's a good video and, uh, you know, it's a great tool, you know, because if people like it, it'll get you some exposure and stuff. And other times I think you just spend a lot of money and I don't know, you know, I mean, it seems like, you know what the funny part to me is that you can spend $200,000 on a record and uh, you, you spend uh, four, six, eight months writing it and four months recording it. And you spend $100,000 on a video and you do it in one day. You know how dumb we feel as firemen compared to rock stars? Come on! Come on, okay, guys, I got this great video concept, man. You're gonna be banana salesmen, you're gonna sell them to these firemen that you guys are gonna be. Then these monsters, which you are gonna be, are gonna come from this building, you're gonna fly out. Then we're gonna have to fix it with these other video companies to come in and make the real you guys playing. And back to the banana salesman. Hey, great concept, all right. How much is it gonna cost? Ooh! It's not love! It's not love! What makes us distinctive, I feel, is we've got a, definitely a very metal side to us yet. Instead of being one singer in the group, which I mean, I'm the lead singer, but Mick sings quite well sometimes. <laughs>
and um, and Jeff sings too, the bassist. So we have instead of like a lot of bands go in the studio and have to do the harmonies and it sounds great, but they can't cop it live. We can, we feel cop it live. Unless we got colds, then we sound like Alvin the Chipmunks. <laughs> We just like, you know, we just like to play music. We're not, I personally, I feel the band feels the same. We're not interested in being uh, quote unquote rock stars or to be bigger than life personalities and all that. We just want to play music and make good music and hopefully that'll carry us uh, across. The, no, so maybe we don't have to be a rock star. You do? Yeah, man. Yeah, you are a rock star, Mick. You're a rock star when I met you. <laughs> You're a goonier looking, but <laughs> I, I personally just want to, you know, play music, that's all. We're musicians and what else can we be? We can flip burgers. He's just seen flip a burger? Not a chance. And our dream always was when we grew up as a band to play around the world and make music for everybody. I mean, we like to play in front of uh, big uh, crowds, but still it's, it's good to go back and play in a club, you know, which we did when we were in, in Russia. For one night we went to a club in Leningrad and watched some Russian bands playing there. And then uh, in the end we hit the stage and played on their instruments in front of, well, 80 or 100 people. It was a very small place, very much underground, it was packed, you know, and so you really, in touch with the audience, you know. It was like very interesting for us to to have this experience in Russia. And it was also very good to have the possibility to bring uh, East and West kids closer together. That's a very important point. And let the Danish language rock music talking to the Eastern world also. I think basically it's the same than over here in America, really. They're going crazy, you know. But it was really funny. They knew all the songs, they knew the words. And they can't speak English, most of them. Let me take you far away. Your delight, a holiday. Let me take you far away. Your delight, a holiday. Exchange the cold days for the sun. A good time. I think we got a lot of ex experience, a lot of inspiration uh, for our music, but that doesn't mean that we uh, play a balalaika on the next album. <laughs> but anyway, these inspirations you get, you, you, they might come out a lot later. Since then we've been busy all the time, so, but it might show, it might come out maybe when we do the next album. We've done so many albums now. This is actually our 10th studio album. And so over the years, I think every band finds its own way of recording. So you develop your own style. And 
our style is just that everybody brings in ideas and we try out a lot of things and we throw away a lot of things and we come back to it and we do it again and so we are somehow very serious about it but on the other side we want to have a lot of fun recording the music. to be excited ourselves first, to then go out and play to the people and excite the people with our music and our stage shows. America, all the festivals I uh, played so far was always fun because the atmosphere is amazing. It's much different to Europe because uh, Americans are more uh, outgoing. Yes, right. There are yeah. party animals out there and we love that. There's nowhere else in the world a place like here. It's great. It's the perfect way to get a nice suntan. <laughs> it's perfect. You yeah. know, you hit the stage, the sun is over there, and, and then you need sunglasses on stage, eh? You know, you take your sunglasses and say, wow, let's go for it, yeah. <laughs> It's a very friendly atmosphere, there's no ego boost things or, uh, I mean, obviously everybody tries to play very, very good because the, the other bands are excellent all too, so it would be not wise to play bad or do bad show. In fact, I think the people who profit from this, the kids out there, because what they get to see is a great show, because every band tries to play really, really good. When Helen come out after us, they play every night excellent, and we go on after Dokken, and I hope we play every night excellent too, <laughs> and so that's the way it goes. But you know, it's very good. Interesting makes your whole life more interesting when you're jumping from one side to the other. Once you're Mozart 80. Rock, 80,000, or you have um, like 80 people. <laughs> Real 80. You know? Real 80, yeah. It's like a room like this for me. I mean, that's fantastic, and that makes everything interesting. The job is done, I go out. Another boring day, I leave it all behind me now. So many words away. The station is much more the place where it's happening, you know. It's really like, I mean, most of the time last year we were working on Savage Amusement, and it's like being in jail, you know. You're so cut it up from the outside world, just following your instincts with no feedback from the outside world. You know, that it, that's why it feels very good when you finally hit the road. <laughs> It's the best bus you can get, man, I'm telling you that. It's fantastic. I think it's better than any drugs. It's better than getting drunk, whatever. It's just the best feeling. But it's a great bus. It gives me chills every time, even after all these years. But I gotta tell you though, the most surprising thing is that the Van Halen guys, I can't tell you how cool those guys are. I don't mean this bad, but for someone who's been around as long as they have, it's like every day they come up, say hello to us, you know, we hang out for a few minutes. Sammy's a Bay Area guy, which is where we're based now. And I mean, just, there's a great feeling with those guys. They're really, really down to earth and just 
kind of very hangoutable, if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, that's it. The individual musicianship in this band is the highest caliber I've ever been involved with, ever stepped on stage with or in a studio with. The uh, chemistry between the four, which creates a whole nother piece of magic, uh, is like incredible. This is a real unique band. It's a great, great band. That's for individuals. Everybody listens to different styles of music and uh, that's, I think, what contributes to the sound. Everybody puts their 25% of what they like in the uh, after you shake it all up, that's what it comes out. I think what's interesting about, about uh, the four of us is that um, once somebody sets the spark, or you know, sets the fire, then the rest of us either catch up or, man, you're history. You, know? <laughs> you, 